It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with chief investment officer, the man with the plan, my father, Big Bob Payne. What's shaking here, Dad? How's everything going on this fantastic weekend, um, Olympic weekend in February? Well, we had a Super Bowl of Olympic proportions last week, right? I know you're feeling the Eagles win in a big way, uh, which does not make us more endearing to our New York listeners. <laughs> well, uh, they're happy for an NFC win because uh, when the NFC wins a Super Bowl, it's a good sign for the stock market. All right. I like it. I like it. That's uh, it's bullish. Bullish statistics on NFC wins in the stock market. Yes, sir. And now this weekend, we got the Winter Olympics coming. That's right. It is the start of the Winter Olympics. And Bob, just a little bit of a Olympic trivia for you. Okay. How much would you guess the United States Olympic Committee pays American athletes that earn a gold medal? Hmm, I think this might be a trick question because... You know, I grew up with Olympic athletes being amateurs, and there was no money involved. But now they're pros, and of course, we found out that the rest of the world was using pros all the time. But since you know the Super Bowl winners got one hundred and twelve thousand per player, and the losers got fifty six thousand, my guess is they they would get at least as much as the losers of the Super Bowl. I'd say fifty thousand a medal. You're being generous. Thirty seven five hundred is what Americans earn for the gold. Now there's hmm. a catch. There was a law signed back in uh, 2016 that Olympic medalists would not be taxed on the oh. majority of that uh, 37500 So maybe on an after-tax basis, it's just as good as the 50 Gs that the Patriots won in the Super Bowl. So, Well, that's nice. Ta Tax-free. How about that medal? Is it actually gold, right? That I don't know, Bob. That I don't know. Mm. But uh, apparently you can pawn it for a good price on eBay <laughs> after you win it. So. <laughs> Well, That'd we be have a shame, a... but uh, anyway. <laughs> so let's 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 go for the USA. Let's hear USA, USA. Let's win as many gold medals as we can. I like it. Go USA, and we have a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about some of the similarities between this year's Winter Olympics and your financial planning. We're going to talk about real estate and retirement. Bob and I are going to answer every question you ever had about owning real estate during your retirement along with this week's financial pornography. It was a crazy week in the markets. So we're going to talk mm. about some of the more absurd news out there that you need to avoid. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning. My brother, Bob's son, our colleague, financial advisor, Chris Payne, is going to be on the show. He's going to address a real financial plan that he worked on and some of the flaws that this couple had with their planning and strategies so you can avoid those same mistakes. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about the Winter Olympics and financial planning. So, Bob, when we talk about this year's Winter Olympics, let's talk about some of the events and how we can relate them back to financial planning, right? So the first one I'm thinking about is figure skating. You know, a lot of times it's a very subjective sport to judge. Someone might be very technical and very good, but they may lose to someone that has more style in their figure skating. So, you know, it's a little bit less objective more subjective. How does that relate back to financial planning and investing? Well, all I remember about figure skating over my lifetime is during the Cold War, if you were from the West and the judge was from the East, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> These judges uh, weren't so subjective as it turns out, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so very subjective when it comes to figure skating. Yeah, unfortunately. But, you know, with investments, a lot easier, except for, you know, what I found, I and mean, this is my 43rd year of helping people with their financial planning. And um, you know, one thing I learned is that risk is only something that you truly know in hindsight. I mean, it's just like predicting a football game, right? I can predict the winner of every football game on Monday morning. I mean, I'm really good with hindsight. How about you? Yeah, right now it's a perfect example. I mean, we had the market run up huge in January and everyone mm -hmm. was really bullish. You might've been thinking to yourself, uh, sky's the limit and everything came crashing down last week. And all of a sudden it seemed so obvious that the market was gonna crash. But you know, literally over this, the time span of four weeks, it's amazing how your emotions can go up and down 
And it seems so much easier in the in retrospect to kind of predict that those moves happen. But when they happen, it's it's very hard to predict that ahead of time. Yeah. Well, so right now our hindsight uh, vision is 2020. But, you know, I did learn something over those 43 years that uh, there is one indicator where you know up front that you're taking on way too much risk and you got an investment that's not going to work out. And that depends on how shiny the brochure is and how thick the prospectus yeah. is, especially regarding the risk topic. So when you go to the risk section of a prospectus, the thicker it is, the further you should run. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I look at our strategy specifically. It's boring, right? We own <laughs> diversified yeah. markets. We own bonds. and But the thing is, when it comes to investing, the less sexy it is, the probably the higher probabilities it's actually going to work. To your point, Bob, the sexier the pitch, the glossier that pamphlet, probably the quicker you should run away from that type of investment as opposed to uh, signing up and, and putting your money there. No wiser words were ever spoken, son. Now, since you're talking about the Olympics and we talk about figure skating, I don't understand this biathlon. Tell me about that, will you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest event ever. Who came up with cross-country skiing and shooting rifles at a target? It just seems to me like it's a pretty weird combination. I mean, I know there's great skiers in the world and there's a lot of people who can shoot, but why in the world would you combine those two sports? Don't you remember when you were growing up in the suburbs of Philadelphia, skiing around the neighborhood with your with your buddies shooting your BB guns? No, we never did that. <laughs> I don't remember that either. <laughs> Who comes up with this? <laughs> and I think that's that's a lot like investing in the sense that you know there's no one product, one size fits all solution that's going to solve all of your investment needs, especially as you're planning for retirement, investing for retirement. You know, it, it just doesn't work. Well, I mean, that's a great point because everybody thinks, of, well, why don't I just have one, you know, one size fit all ETF or fund or, or investment strategy? Because, you know, the markets are all about volatility. Not that I have to remind anyone, you know, you, you all experienced volatility this week, you know, to the downside. You know, one thing I know about volatility is no one minds volatility to the upside. You know, the market's That's up right. 700 points to 1,000 points, and everybody's really happy, right? It's not called volatility when it's going up, only when it's going down, which is <laughs> it's called, another This is what altogether. I'm supposed to do when it goes up, right? It only, yeah, only bothers yeah. us when it goes down. That's, that's normal human behavior. But you know what you need to take advantage of volatile markets is what we call a negatively correlated asset allocated portfolio. Now, that's a mouthful, right? What does that mean in plain English? Yeah, I think in plain English, it's mainly saying you got to own some investments that zig when other investments zag. And I think this last week's the perfect example of that when the market- Wait a minute, wait a minute. But was this week a zig or a zag? I can't remember. <laughs> Depends on the market, right? Because bond prices actually held up well while mm -hmm. the market sold off and commodities actually held up a bit better too than the rest of the market. So the point is you want to have different pockets of money because mm. over the course of any year, a lot of different things are going to happen. You can't have predicted ahead of time. So your portfolio already has to be prepared. Well, I love it uh, when we get a call from someone and says, oh, the trend is your friend. Shouldn't you invest based on the trend? <laughs> well, the problem is the trend can stop abruptly like we saw <laughs> in the last week. <laughs> you just don't know when that's going to happen. So you already have to be prepared. And that's the key here. So if you're thinking to yourself, I've seen a lot of volatility in the markets. I don't have a strategy that addresses that. I need to be prepared ahead of time next time. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement. Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review where we analyze everything. We're going to load all of your investments into one personalized portal for you, and we're going to look at the big picture. We're going to look at taxes. We're going to have our CPA review your tax return. We're going to look at your estate plan. If you bring in your wills and trusts that haven't been updated in a decade, we'll have our estate planning partner review those for you as well to make sure they're up to date. And we're going to do a full portfolio x-ray. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? We're going to break down all those hidden costs and those mutual funds, insurance products that you own to see if we can help you reduce the cost on your portfolio. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. Can we increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? And we're going to look at diversification. Are you prepared when the market crashes? Is your portfolio proactively, properly diversified, or are you winging it? Bob and I are going to show you exactly where the pitfalls are in your portfolio and how to correct them. And then finally, we're going to tie everything together and we're going to determine, are you going to outlive your money 
or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? And all you have to do is call 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you your own personal total financial master plan. There's no obligation, there's no cost, but you have to act. Call 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text us at 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with my son, Rye. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. When you reflect on your life, what would you like to see as your fondest memories? Summers at your favorite vacation spot? Ice cream with the grandkids after their first t-ball game? Maybe it was your great adventure across the world or volunteering with a nonprofit. Of course, those memories are still in the future, although they're not as far away as you might think. Be sure you have a financial plan to make them happen. Don't find yourself worrying while enjoying that ice cream. Peace of mind is attainable in your retirement. With the proper planning, you can secure a meaningful retirement. At Payne Capital Management, we can help you make those dreams a reality. Schedule your visit with our team today. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. We want to make memories with you. Get started by calling or texting 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain market update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer at Payne Capital Management. And after getting off to a blistering start in 2018, markets reversed course this week with the largest weekly fall in two years. Now, many pundits believe the week's decline is simply an overdue pullback, exacerbated by fears of rising inflation, a move higher in interest rates, and a crash in investment products where hedge funds made huge bets on low volatility. Not a good decision with high volatility right now. Well, this may simply be a repricing of financial assets to the new reality of increasing wages and interest rates. See, corporations will have to pay more in salaries for the same amount of work and issue new corporate debt at higher rates, increasing their cost of borrowing. So simply repricing of financial assets, not a fundamental shift. See, earnings in the U.S. continue to beat analyst expectations and are up nearly 15% from the same period a year ago. Highest growth rate since the third quarter of 2011. We also saw, more importantly, revenue growth and that's also the highest since the third quarter of 2011. See, the bottom line is the markets are inherently volatile. As investors, we don't mind upside volatility or the new record highs we experienced over the last nine years. And when the normal correction or downside volatility that we all expected finally arrives, well, well, we tend to flip out because we're all average, normal human beings. And downside volatility is just a fancy Wall Street term for losses. And no one, and I mean no one, likes losses. So over the past 20 years, there's been 10 corrections in the S&P 500, including the current one. And on average, it takes about four months to recover the losses. Just reminds us that every dip in history has been temporary and the ups inevitable. You know, I think John Bogle says it best. The stock market is a giant distraction to the business of investing. Focusing on the day-to-day is a really good way to lose sight of the long-term trends or why you're investing in the first place. If you're wondering, is your portfolio strategy designed to take advantage of the current market volatility? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text 844-752-6692. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. You'll have the freedom to select top investment strategies, not just one particular product. 
And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call or text today for a complimentary review. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I want to educate you. You Our goal is just to give you practical, common sense advice that you can apply to your investing, your retirement planning. And that's why we put together our latest guide on tax reform, the highlights of the new tax reform so you're prepared tax-wise. Go ahead and text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. You can get our latest guide at no cost. Check it out. Know what's going on with taxes this year. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888, and you can download our newest guide. Get all the information you need for 2018, the highlights to the new tax reform at 555-888. Simply text the word bullish. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888. And in this segment, we want to talk about real estate. You know, Bob, during the financial planning process, we invariably get a lot of questions about how your house or real estate in general fits into your retirement plan. Let's address some of the more popular questions and topics that we typically get. You know, often the question is, you know, hey, Bob, hey, Ryan, do I pay off the house as soon as possible or I enjoy the low interest rate and pay it off slowly? Where do you stand on that debate, Bob? Right. Not, to, not that I have to remind you, but uh, my generation of baby boomers love real estate. We were taught you know, from the day we were born that the most important investment you can make is buying a home. And my experience has been that's not necessarily the best investment you can make. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, if you think about all the carrying costs of real estate, that's the thing we forget about. You know, How often do you have to replace the roof? How often does mm-hmm. the heater go out? How often do you have to replace the you know the plumbing. I mean, all these things come up along the way, which really make real estate in a lot of cases a cash drain as opposed to an asset. Yeah. And the thing is, when you found what I found out about real estate is something they've always said is location, location, location. But uh, you know, if you bought something in the Bay Area or up in Manhattan, you, you did really well. But what if you bought in Minneapolis or Detroit or in Las Vegas when the demand was so high? So it can be a huge gamble. But I think the one thing that we hear a lot about is there's people have a lot of equity when they go to retire. And they also have a big mortgage, whether they should pay that mortgage off or whether they should keep that mortgage. What are your thoughts on that, right? Well, I think it depends on your situation. If you look at the math on if you have a, have a low rate on your mortgage and you keep your money invested in a portfolio long term, a lot of times your portfolio is going to grow faster uh, mm-hmm. than what you're borrowing at on your mortgage. But I think there's something even more important than that. You always talk about keeping your portfolio down to the sleep point. And yep. I think if it's peace of mind and you have the cash, pay off your mortgage. Uh, you know, A lot of times, I think it's better to have the peace of mind than being concerned about that debt that you still have outstanding. And most likely, based on the analysis that we typically run, it probably doesn't make a big enough difference in your financial life not to pay it off. So I think the good rule of thumb is, if it makes you sleep better, pay off the mortgage. You know, it really worries me why if you have an adjustable rate mortgage and you haven't locked it in, you know, what are you waiting for? Make sure you lock that rate in so you know what your costs are going to be. You can't do any planning if you have variable rates. Yeah, exactly right. That's the other thing is if you if you have a floating rate mortgage right now, interest rates are going up. The Fed's probably going to increase rates three times this year. Maybe four. Maybe four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe three to four. So you know, you might be paying a lot more on that mortgage by the end of the year. So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. If you're going to hold a mortgage, lock in. Don't wait for interest rates to rise because the odds that's going to happen are, are pretty, you know, pretty high at this point. The other thing we get a lot of questions about is, well, maybe I'll just buy some rental properties to create some retirement income. You know, what are some of the pros and cons to to that when you're looking at your retirement plan, Bob? Well, you know, over 43 years of having invested in financial assets. 
I've never been woken up at two o'clock in the morning by my bond portfolio asking me to unclog the toilet, son. <laughs> it's right, but we forget if we own real estate, it's called sweat equity. And why it's <laughs> called sweat equity is because you're gonna sweat. <laughs> I mean, yes, I think sure. <laughs> One of the points of retirement is you don't want to sweat, right? You're trying to dial back a lot of the things that you're doing. So I don't, I never say that real estate's a bad investment. I think it can be a very good investment, but a lot of times, especially if it's a rental income type situation, you're going to, you're going to earn it. And I think that's the whole idea of a passive portfolio is mm -hmm. like you said, Bob, you know, your, your portfolio is not going to call you up in the middle of the night because of, you know, whatever, whatever happened to your property that needs to be fixed. And I think that's a key, key determinant of, do you really want to have a lot of sweat equity rental properties in retirement? Yeah, I know down in the Atlantic City area, Rye, we had a lot of casinos close in the last two years. And all of a sudden, all those great rental properties didn't have any renters, you know, because no one had a job or the people that, that uh, lost their job didn't want to pay their rent. It's pretty hard to collect from somebody who doesn't want to pay you. Yeah, a lot of headaches there and a lot of variables involved. And it just comes down to what headaches do you want during your retirement mm -hmm. bliss? So food for thought. So, so how much is too much house, right? Well, that's the other question, right? Is in, in retirement, a lot, a lot of questions that we get is do you downsize? Is it time mm -hmm. to say, get rid of the bigger house, kids are out of the house and go to a smaller house or rent? You know, And I know, Bob, you recently downsized from our childhood home. What's your experience been? Well, my experience has been that, um, you know, after your children are grown, they're educated, and they're out working, that um, you really only use three rooms of the house. So if you have a you know big four or five, 6,000 square foot home, it's kind of a, a waste to have all that empty space. And then, of course, the house can always get back at you because, uh, you know, your sister's bathroom flooded and uh, we had to replace our ceilings and our walls and our floors. Thank goodness for insurance. So we, we didn't get out in time, but you know, after the insurance covered all those costs, we were really happy to downsize uh, the home you grew up in, right? Yeah, and that's the thing you have to look at, right? It's just, I mean, you're telling me, you know, you don't have the gardener costs anymore. Shocking, <laughs> Bob. I think the audience is going to, listeners are probably shocked that you didn't do all the gardening yourself. Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't. Uh, actually, right. I thought my, it was amazing. My landscaper was a, uh, he could be an orthopedic surgeon because he made more doing my landscaping than he did operating. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, it's it's not cheap. So I think yeah, looking at those costs, it's a big can have a big big impact on your retirement. Just reducing those costs, and you can even look at maybe some cases renting might be a better better idea depending on your carrying costs. Like you know, for example, we know New Jersey residents, Connecticut residents here in New York. I mean, your real estate taxes can be exorbitant. So maybe downsizing, going to a township with lower real estate costs and things like that can make a lot of sense. And these are all in the context you know, of doing a real financial plan. Right. I think if anything, that um, in this discussion, everybody should rethink you know, the, the thoughts that they have about real estate and the, and the central beliefs that we've always had about a home. It's an asset. And it's an asset you have to analyze. And you know, if you're thinking about you know, how do I position that asset within my total financial plan, if you're one of the next few callers, and have at least 200000 saved for retirement, Ryan, I'll answer that question for you by creating your own total financial master plan with no obligation and no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sit down and show you our 360 financial portal and how your real estate and all your other investments work in conjunction with each other. See, we believe that all assets should be managed in concert with every other asset that you have. So if you're one of the next 10 callers, what we'll do is a full holistic review and we'll do an x-ray of your full portfolio. I mean, you don't have to look at all your state, but just throw them in a shopping bag, make an appointment, and we'll put it all together for you in our famous investment analysis spreadsheet, where we're going to look at all the key elements of a successful portfolio. Are you properly diversified? Uh, do you have your portfolio diversified across asset classes and within asset classes? Are you being overcharged by your portfolio? Boy, I hope not. You know, fees are something that just cuts down your return and could prevent you from having the retirement that you truly deserve. And income, we want to be sure that you're optimizing all the income that your portfolio can generate. And finally, we're going to put it all together into one 360 financial portal, which will answer that age old question, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has now perfected over four decades. That's right. For over 43 years, we've been helping families like yours go from your point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Act now. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 
6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers with over $200,000 safe for retirement, get the full holistic review. Call us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Don't waste time. Get a holistic review of all of your money at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, this has been an absurd week for the markets, so I imagine the financial pornography has to be more absurd than ever. What's happening out there in the media that we just don't like? Well, I'll tell you what I don't like, Rise. The media isn't understanding what's going on right now. Okay, well, that's that's not news. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you've heard, me, you've heard me talk more than once on the show about the lack of liquidity in the markets as a result of banking reforms under Dodd-Frank. And, you know, how many times have, has anyone ever complained to you about the market going up 700 points or 1,000 points in a day? Never in my life have I heard anyone <laughs> complain about that. No, but, uh, you know, what happens on the downside, like this week, we had a, a day where we closed down 1,175 points. It sure caught a lot of people's attention. And, and the problem is you don't have any buyers or sellers in big swings in the market now because of these changes. Now, I'm all for reform. I think that uh, we certainly don't want to have banks that are too big to fail. But one of the unintended consequences, right, of Dodd-Frank was that the bank can no longer act as market makers, you know, buying up these investments, you know, when, when the markets go into these big volatile periods like they used to in the past because they're now forced to keep more in cash. Yeah, I talked to one of my good friends who's a big trader at one of the banks, and he said the same mm-hmm. thing when the market sold off this past week. There just weren't any buyers. There was no one able to step in and take care of that liquidity like there used to be. One of the things I want you to think about right now, look at in your portfolio, is as much of the volatile risk of illiquidity we experienced in the equity market this week, the big reckoning is coming in the bond market, especially if you own a bond fund. You are at tremendous risk right now because without that liquidity, when the interest rates start to go up like they've started to, these bond right. funds are going to experience declines like you've never seen in your lifetime. Yeah, I absolutely. We've been talking about this for a long time, and I think it's kind of where the rubber is going to meet the road here. To your point, Bob, rates are starting to go up. Bond funds are going to be a very risky investment. And the problem is you probably own bond funds in your portfolio because you think that's for liquidity and safety. And it's going to be a rude awakening, especially if rates keep going up like they are, and there's high odds that's going to happen. And there's nothing implicitly wrong with a bond fund. And it's not your fault. It's the thousands of other people that you don't know that are in partner with you in the fund. When they panic out, it penalizes you, even though you're not panicking. And it forces the bond manager to go out and sell bonds. And if there's everybody selling at the same time, the prices go straight down. And just like we did back in 2011, when we had a municipal bond route, uh, all the people were panicking out of municipal bonds because of you know some news item. And you were penalized, even though you sat there perfectly calm. So you don't want to be penalized by someone else's bad behavior. Yeah, it's kind of like being stuck on the elevator with people you don't like. (laughs) (laughs) Worse than that, Ryan, you lose money. Yeah, right. Exactly right. And I think to your point, Bob, right now, be proactive, not reactive. It's a good time to get that money out of bond funds and reposition it by owning your bonds outright. And you know, we do that with institutional management, which is another layer. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, but you got to start to review your options on how to do that. Another interesting piece of financial pornography this week, or just mm. an interesting piece about uh, robo-advisors, the websites of two of the biggest robo-advisors, that's Wealthfront and Betterment, crashed as the S&P 500 sank 4.1%. Obviously, complaints quickly spread across the internet from people who had trouble logging into their accounts. So Mm. that's kind of scary if you're trying to rebalance your portfolio. And I know in our case, I like to buy when the market's down 4%. You may have wanted to panic out, but they couldn't access 
these very sophisticated Bob Robo Advisor accounts. So it's like a run on the bank. Uh, you're standing outside looking in and you can't access your account. Yeah, exactly right. So, I mean, just kind of a pitfall with some of this more automated technology that we're seeing. And this is the first time that we've had a real severe correction since these robo advisors have come into vogue. I mean, it's just definitely, it's a little unnerving to know that, uh, you know, you weren't able to log into your account when you had some of the most extreme volatility we've seen in a long time. And, you know, I don't have a problem with robo advisors except for two things. You know, number one, the only thing they can invest your money in uh, other than stocks are bond funds. And we just talked about the risk and the downside volatility of owning a bond fund. And the second thing is, is that you're, you're left to your own devices on how to behave. And I think that can be a big problem because, you know, last I checked, we're all average, normal human beings subject to those two biggest risks in the stock market and the financial markets. And that's fear and greed. Those two, and fear and greed drive the markets. And it's so hard to avoid becoming fearful when the markets become volatile. Yeah, and I think this is the best time to actually a wake up call maybe to the decisions about your portfolio because we saw the market sell off big. A, how'd your portfolio hold up? Are you well positioned? What pitfalls do you have? It goes back to our favorite Warren Buffett quote, Bob. When the tide goes out, you can see who's been swimming naked. And it wasn't pretty this week. It was not pretty this week. You may have been naked. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, okay, I need a real plan in place. Markets are volatile. I'm not prepared. I have a lot of bond funds. I have a lot of things in my portfolio that probably aren't designed to weather the storm. Here's your shot to get that full analysis. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our famous total financial master plan. And we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full holistic review. If you bring in all your statements, we're going to load them all into one personalized portal for you to give you a bird's eye view of your total financial situation. We're going to analyze it. We're going to do a full portfolio x-ray of all of your investments. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio? We're going to break down all the costs in your portfolio to make sure you're not being overcharged. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than this market fluctuations that we're having. Bob and I are going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to make sure it's retirement ready. And finally, we're going to look at your diversification. What pitfalls are you swimming naked right now with your portfolio? Do you have bond funds? We're going to break down all the risks in your portfolio to make sure that you're retirement ready. And then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to model out. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. What an opportunity. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. You can call or text us at 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. No obligation, no cost. You have to call 844-PLAN-NYC. Call or text us at 844 844- 752-6692. This is Bob. This is Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. We told you earlier that Bob Payne is the Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This means he oversees all of the portfolio designs and financial planning strategies for the firm. For 40 years, he's worked to change the way the financial industry approaches financial planning. He turned away from the traditional Wall Street sales pitch and pioneered a new approach to retirement planning using goal-oriented, customizable plans that better fit your individual needs. Reach out to Bob and the team for a complimentary review by calling or texting 844 Seven five two six six nine two. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know that it can cost more than 280 grand to run a hot dog stand per year in Central Park? Speaking of hot dogs, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain and make your retirement plan a wiener. Oh, uh, gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, I meant to say a winner. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I are simple men. And we want to keep it simple for you. That's why we came out with our latest guide, the highlights of the new tax reform. So you're tax ready for 2018. Simply text the word bullish. 
That's B U L L I S H to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. You can download your free copy of the highlights of this year's new tax reform. Be tax ready. Go ahead and text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. And if you want to know what Bob really looks like and realize that the man behind the voice is even more handsome, go ahead and check us out on the World Wide Web. Go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. We put a lot of articles up there, timely things to read, anti-financial pornography. You can catch all of our latest shows, and you can also subscribe, get the show right to your email. So you can check us out right there. And if you have any questions for myself or Bob, you can always email us directly. Questions at BeBullish.com. That's questions at BeBullish.com. Bob and I will answer all of your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we got some pretty good questions. So Bob, the first question is for you. It comes in from Michael. He's in Rye, New York. He writes in, Bob, I heard that I should be saving 10% of my income toward retirement. Does that sound accurate? I'm in my 50s. So I need to be sure I'm doing this right. You're right. You need to be doing this right. And that's why you need the A to B strategy. Couldn't be any simpler than that. You know, getting from point A where you are now to point B, your goals and your dreams and doing it with your values. So there's a few things you need to do. First, you need to total up your assets, right? You need to know what you have. I mean, most folks don't know what they have. They don't, they don't know where it's stashed. They know it's in a drawer somewhere. But, you know, if you're married, you have multiple accounts. There's, you know, you have to put it all together. The number one thing you have to do is know where you are right now. If I asked you for directions and I said, right, how do you get to your office? And you say, Bob, where are you? And I say, I have no idea. How are you going to give me directions? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's the crux of A to B, right? It's like, let's figure out where point B is and point A is and then build a plan around it. And it's kind of hard to do that if you have no idea where you are and worse, no idea where you're going. Sure. And that's the second part of, you know, point B, you know, how much are you going to need in retirement? Right. And don't think that that old rule of thumb where you plan on spending 70 to 80 percent of your current income still works. And what are you finding, Rye, with your clients that are retired? We talked about this last week on the show, but odds are you're probably going to spend more in retirement. And that doesn't even factor in what about health care costs? You know, got to factor in mm-hmm. you're living a lot longer than your parents did. There's going to be a lot more medical expenses in retirement as well, not to mention what you call, Bob, that insidious tax inflation. Mm -hmm. So if you have a million bucks today, it's going to be worth a half a million dollars in purchasing power 20 years from now. That's pretty scary. It really is. And that's why it's so critical that you know where you are now financially. You know exactly what you have in investments. You know what your passive income streams are, your entitlements, right? Your social security, your pension benefits. And then you have a good idea of what your budget is now. Know what your current expenses are. Once you have those two items, then you can use this marvelous tool that Ryan and I use called the Financial 360 Portal, where you can run what if scenarios. You can figure out at that point what your needed savings rate is now, how much you should contribute to your 401k. Are you taking advantage of the matching? You can run one of scenarios all day long, not just today, every day for the rest of your life. You can play with it all, right? You can know exactly what you need to do. Why would you want to wonder when you could know? Yeah. I mean, our our financial 360 portal is just the greatest thing since sliced bread, if I don't say so myself. And I think that's where you need to start if you're a little overwhelmed with retirement planning. It's like, let's tally everything up. And because of technology now, you know, it can build a spot where we can look at everything holistically because it's that's the problem is you probably have things everywhere. It's probably disjointed and you're probably not as diversified as you think you are. So it's just nice to plot all these things out and get a bird's eye view of everything with technology now. And we can do that in a really slick, easy way. But the first step to your point, Bob, is you got to gather everything and you got to start to map out that point A to point B. I mean, that's that's really the first steps to true retirement planning and giving yourselves a nest egg that uh, isn't going to run out when you're in your golden years. So true, Ryan. No, no better words you're ever spoken. So that was a great question that we have from Michael. What else is in the mailbag this week? Well, we got another question from Oscar in Morristown, New Jersey. He writes in, Ryan, my financial advisor is older than me. Should mm. I move to someone else who won't retire before I do? Yes, I would. I think that's oh, one of the boy. problems with the industry today, Bob, is the fact that the average financial advisor is turning 60 
and most likely is probably going to retire in the next couple of years. And let's face it, retirement is a journey, not a destination. You really want to have some continuity with your retirement planning. So it's a real issue. Well, it's really hard to reach your financial advisor when he's laying on the beach or she's laying on the beach next to you. Maybe you can reach that particular person, but what about the rest of their clients? Problem with our industry is that the, um, the advisors, the average age is like you say in the 60s and they're retiring. You know, this market stays volatile. They're going to retire very quickly. Yeah, that's that's going to push that retirement age down for the average financial advisor who doesn't want another market cycle to uh, to stomach. Um, one of the reasons too that you know we have all young advisors because you want to well, have we have the best of both worlds, right? We have uh, we have the old dog, me with the gray hair and the stomach and the scar tissue and the stomach lining, who's seen pretty much seen it all. I could say at this point, my forty third year in, in the business, but then we have. You know, we have great financial advisors who are contacting our clients on a consistent basis, you know, disseminating that information and staying in touch so that when you have a volatile market like we had this week, you didn't have your robo advisors shut down. You know, you were able to reach your advisor when you and get the advice you needed when you needed it, not when they felt like giving it to you. Yeah, exactly right. And I think that's that's going to be a key moving forward is you have to start thinking, okay, as I get to these key years, you know, when you're five, 10 years out from retirement, you're not finally in retirement, you know, you're going to want that continuity with your plan. You're going to want to have somebody mm-hmm. who's available. And that's why I think it does make a lot of sense to have someone younger advising on your accounts, but it can't discount experience as well. I have some scars on my back too, Bob, only 17 years <laughs> in the business, pale to your 42, 43 years of experience, but uh, but having that combination is pretty critical because you don't want to get some new advisor who's fresh out of college, doesn't know anything. So that combination of experience and youth can be the probably the best advantage when it comes to your, your long-term financial planning needs. You know, right? It's always been my observation that there's no institutional memory not just in the financial services industry, but in any company. I saw it happen all the time at Merrill Lynch. Every 20, 25 years, management had to recreate the wheel. That's if you know all the smart people that came before them didn't know what they were doing. So, you know, Ryan, I have a question for you. Ask away, Bob. Whenever you ask someone that you just meet on a scale of one to 10, how organized are they financially? What do they typically say? Let's be realistic. Most of us, I mean, we're a three or four. We don't know where everything is. We don't have everything organized. Where would they like to be? Don't we all want to be a 10, Bob? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And all you need to do to be a 10 is be one of our next 10 callers, especially if you've saved over 200000 for retirement. You know, Ryan and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. You know what this means? This means that all of your account numbers, all those passwords and security questions that you have for every bank account, every brokerage account, every insurance policy, every credit card, even your mortgage, Virtually everything with a statement and online access, you no longer have to remember. You can simplify it and organize it into one financial portal with one sign-on and one password. Wow, wouldn't it be amazing to be financially organized? Something happened to you. How easy would it be for your children or your spouse to keep your life working or to transition your financial affairs in a worst-case scenario? See, if you're one of the next 10 callers, what we're going to do is tie it all together for you into your own personal 360 financial portal, which will give you a window into your financial future. You'll be able to run wealth projections on every goal you have, and it'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I have now been perfecting for over four decades. We want to help take your family from your point A to your financial point B, your goals, your dreams with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Call us now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Get a full holistic review. For the next few callers, if you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, call us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. Get a real holistic review of your finances at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio.
Here's this week's spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Bob and I want to educate you. We want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date, common-sense information when it comes to your planning and investing. That's why we put together our latest guide, Highlights of the New Tax Reform. You can access it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word BULLISH, to 555 555- 888. Get all the highlights of the new tax reform. You can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. And now we have a very special guest on the show this morning. We have Bob's son, my brother, financial advisor, Payne Capital, Mr. Chris Payne. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rye. Good morning, Dad. Welcome, son. I just have one thing I want to say. Go one Eagles. Thing? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, we're going to lose listeners here in New York. Uh, <laughs> well, Chris, thanks for coming on the show this morning for our spotlight segment. And that's where each week we dissect a real financial plan and we cover the, what we call the flaws or pain points so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. So why don't you talk about a case that you just worked on and some of the mistakes this couple is making with their retirement planning? You know, Ryan, I think this is a perfect case for this segment of the show because this case is filled with pain points. So let's just get started. Let's talk about uh, the financial plan. So this is a, a referral that I got from, that I received from one of the accountants that I work with locally here in Philadelphia. And she said that she had a friend who was uh, in her mid seventies that was looking to reevaluate her overall plan and her portfolio. So, you know, one of the first things is we always do is we went through a financial plan for this client. And one of the things that we found out right off the bat is that you know, based on what she's spending today and based on, you know, the amount of income that she has and overall assets, you know, she really is set for life. So mm-hmm. one of the things that I noticed right off the bat was the amount of risk that she's taking. So if you had to guess, Rye, someone who's 75 years old, what do you think an appropriate amount of risk would be? In 75, if you're retired, I mean, our, our rule of thumb is the more dependent you are on your portfolio, the less dependent you want to be on risky assets like stocks. So I would say at the very most... I would have no more than 40% at risk in the markets, and that's on the high side. Yeah, and I I completely agree with you. So this client was taking the risk level of somebody that's in their their 40s or 50s. She was closer to 62% equity at this point. You know, so here's someone who is set for life and taking way more risk than she needs to. Yeah, but you know what, Chris? That's so typical. I, I, I found over my career that the number one thing I found in every portfolio is that everyone takes more risk than necessary. It's because no, I don't know. I guess no one ever tells them how much risk they need to take. And since the market goes up over time, they tend to end up at mid seventies with a lot more in risk and investments than they realize. Well, then, you know what I think? I think people are then really blessed to have us because, you know, we're (laughs) going to be very honest and tell them right off the bat that, you know, this is completely unnecessary what they're doing. Uh, I can't argue with there. I can't argue with (laughs) you on that point at all. So, Chris, I'm looking at this uh, portfolio x-ray that you put together where we can look at income fees, and it looks like there's a lot of hidden costs in this portfolio. This woman's paying over 2% a year on some of these funds, which is a very high fee to pay when it comes to your investments. Yeah, it's true, right? I mean, the, the, the fees and the internal costs of these investments are extraordinarily high. And then on top of that, the advisor is also charging a fee. Which you know, I have no problem with an advisor charging a fee. Look, we're not the Red Cross. We, you know, we have to we have to make a living. But you know, when you add in those high expenses, it really adds up. And we, you know, basically figured out that overall, this person's paying you know almost one and a half percent just in fees, and hmm. that includes a really high expense variable annuity that we were able to find you know as we were going through the process. And you know, look, I mean, a lot of people have annuities in their portfolio, but you know, this, this person, 75 years old, you know, she had an annuity before that had come out of surrender, meaning that she could have taken the, the money out of the annuity without penalty. And then what this advisor did was that they, they went ahead and rolled her back into another, another annuity with a seven-year surrender period. So basically, Ouch. they tied up the liquidity for another seven years. So she will be 82 years old, you know, before she could have the full access to her money in this annuity. And if she wanted well, to get out of it today, right, how much do you think it would cost her? I'm going to say at least... I don't know, five, six grand. Exactly. So, wow. you know, losing liquidity see, at 75. I watch these commercials on really television. They talk about annuities have no cost. There's no fees. 
Why yeah. is there a 7% surrender on something that has no cost and no fees, Chris? Well, you know, from what I understand, the broker up front gets paid a 6 7% commission. So I think that might have something to do with it. Okay. Oh, that's the <laughs> yield to broker. Their yield to broker is very good. And this woman who now is 75, and let's be realistic about this, you want to have more liquidity, more access to your money, not less when you get older. He just locked her money up until her 80s. What a complete conflict of interest. That's, I mean, I, you see that a lot, but I mean, you know, having liquidity in retirement is so important. And that's where a lot of times these insurance products or annuities are, are not a great fit and really unfair to the actual investor. So Chris, when you're able to reconstruct this portfolio and reduce the overall cost and increase the income in the portfolio, I see a 2.4% increase a year. That's phenomenal. Exactly. Exactly. And that equates to about $8,200 a year. I mean, that's substantial. And if you compound that over a 20 year period, Dad, you know, that's a little bit north of $200,000. Very mm. substantial. Sure, it is. Yeah. And I'm noticing the number one investment in this portfolio is going to make Bob really upset is an infamous bond fund. Oof. <laughs> Bob, how do you feel about that bond fund? Is, is this- well, I feel really good because Chris got her out of it before this interest rates uh, started to crank up and, and save this woman a lot of money. Well, Chris, another, as Bob would say, financial masterpiece. Great job on this portfolio analysis and you know a lot of the problems that we see every day. And if you're sitting there thinking, I need a review like this, am I paying too much in fees? Can I increase the income on my portfolio? Do I own bond funds? Here's your shot to get the same exact analysis. We have a few slots left. If you give us a call right now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, you can get a slot for us to run our total financial master plan and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. That's a full holistic review. We're going to take every statement you have. We're going to load all your investments into a personalized financial portal for you so we can take a holistic view of all your finances. We're going to do a complete portfolio x-ray just like this. We're going to look at income. We're able to increase the income to over $8,000 a year for this person. Can we increase the income on your portfolio? It's so critical for retirement. We're going to look at fees. There were hidden costs in this portfolio of up to 2%. Are you being overcharged on your investments? We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Are you taking too much risk? If you're in your 70s, do you want to see the market decline and see your portfolio decline extraordinarily? We're going to show you exactly where those risks are. Do you have bond funds? We're going to show you what to get out of. We're going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio for retirement. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan to determine are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies our family, Chris, Ryan, Bob, have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's call or text 844-752-6692. We have a few slots left if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will run for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call at 844-752-6692. Well, another fantastic show with all the pain boys. Chris, it was a real honor and pleasure to have you on the show. Right. The pleasure was all mine. It's always great to spend more time with my family. You know what, Chris? You prefer to spend more time with me or Bob. Let's get real. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rod. The, the line's breaking up a little, but I didn't hear you. <laughs> the attorney's on the line. He wants to know if I want to redo my will. <laughs> so it's oh, more boy. fun to spend time with Dad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We'll talk about this offline. Well, have a great weekend. Another awesome show. As always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.